Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the solution to the Power Query problem that I gave you in the last week. If you tried, but you couldn't really figure it out, there are a lot of solutions that people have posted. And I'm going to discuss my solution in this particular video. Let's start. All right, I'm in Power Query and I have loaded the data. Now, before I actually proceed to start to build the solution, I'd like to talk about the problem once again, real quick, and then we'll actually start to build the solution. We have categories here and we have the values here. And for every single category, I want to refer to the previous row. And when the category changes, the process of referring to the previous row should start once again, right? So for all the A categories, the previous row uh, in the current row is 125, 180, so on and so forth. And for B, uh, in the first row, there is not going to be any previous row. For the second row, obviously, the previous row is going to show 120, right? So category by category, we have to go and refer to the previous row. Now. As of now, the data looks sorted, but we're not really sure if the data is going to be sorted or not. So let's just not rely on the sorting of the data. Let's just actually group the data uh, and then actually begin from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the transform tab. In the transform tab, I have an option called group by. I'm going to click on that. And I'm not going to do any calculations while I'm trying to group the data. I just want to bring all the categories together and have the entire table for the category. Please take a look. So uh, basic grouping is just fine. It says, hey, do you want to create a column? Yes, of course, I want to create a column. And let's just kind of call this column as a uh, full table, right? Uh, and the operation is all rows. So now I am going to get a two columnar data, which is where I'll have a unique category. And for the unique category, I'll have uh, the values for that particular category. If I now click on OK, you can see that we have the unique categories A, B, and C. If I now peek into the table, I have, uh, of course, the category once again right here, and of course, uh, all the values that belong to A. Now, here in this particular table, which is as of now nested, I will actually go refer to the previous row, right? That's where the technique actually starts. So the next thing that I, I want to do is to be able to refer to the previous row, the way that I'd like to go about is that first, I'd like to create an index number or a serial number in this particular table. That means I'd like to create additional column right here, and what that column is going to give me like a serial number. So maybe zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth, right? And that is going to be done for each and every table. That means each and every category. How do we do that? I'm going to create a new step right here. And in this particular table, I will add a column with a serial number. So I'm just going to click on the FX right here. That means create a new step. Let's just write the table dot transform column function. So table dot transform columns. And I'm going to start the bracket. The first part of this particular function is that which table do you want to transform? So I'd like to transform this particular table, which is grouped rows. Now grouped rows is nothing but the previous step. So this particular step gives me a table, returns me a table, and this step is what I'd like to work with. Now in this particular step, I would like to add a column to every single table, which was actually nested. So if you actually go back and take a look at the previous step, in this particular table, which is a two columnar table, there is a column, which is the full table column in which there are nested tables to each of these tables, I'd like to add a column. So how do we do that? I'm actually going to come right here. Uh, table dot transform columns is good. It had it had asked me, hey, which table would you like to work with? I'd like to work with the table in the previous row. Now, what is the operation that I would like to do? So in this particular column, which is the full table column, there are three tables and I'd like to add a column. So let's just go and do that. I'm going to say something like a double curly bracket. That's the syntax. So you need to have a list of a list. One curly bracket means one list. Two curly brackets like nested curly brackets means list of a list. Now which column do I want to work with? I want to work with the full table column. Let's just be really sure of the name. So let's just see that what is the name of that column? Full table, correct? I'm just going to go ahead and say that in this particular column, in each row of this column, I'd like to do uh, an operation called table dot add index column, right? And uh, which is the table that I'd like to uh, add the index column to. So every single row of this particular table, I'd like to add an index column. And the name of the new column is going to be uh, what it's going to be, let's say the index, right? Let's just see what we get. So I'm just going to close the bracket and commit to the formula. I get a table right here and I do get an index column added in that particular table. So now we have three columns. We have the category column, the value column and the index column. And using the index column, I can actually go back and refer to the previous row. All right, once we have actually built the index, which is nothing but the serial number for every single row, 
what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to pick up the value column which is right here and I'm going to start to reference the index based on the previous row. So I'm going to come to this particular value column and I'm going to say hey why don't you if you're working in row number two why don't you actually return me the zeroth row which is actually the previous row right. If I'm working in the next row which is row number 180 I'd say hey give me the first row which is the previous row. So I will actually subtract one from the index to go to the previous row and call this particular value column. So let's just see how can we do that. To be able to do that we would need three things. We would first need this entire table that means which table are we trying to work with. And the second thing that I would need to build my formula is the name of the column that means which column I'm trying to pull the record from and then which row of that particular column do I want. Do I want the first row, do I want the second row, third row, so on and so forth and that I'm going to do it using the index column. Index minus one right because I have to go to the previous row. Now let's just start to see that how do we do that in a closed nested table because as soon as we open up the table we again get back to the previous you know all the records. We don't really want to do that as of yet. Let's just see how can we actually do that on a ne closed nested table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the add columns tab and create a custom column. In that custom column, let's just say that I want to first capture the entire table. Remember what I said about how are we going to build the formula? The first thing that we would need to be able to build that particular formula is the entire table itself, right? This entire table. So let's just go capture this entire table in the current row. So once I go to the custom column formula box right here, let's just declare a very simple variable. So I'm just going to go with my let statement and I'm just going to say my all data table, right? All data table, right? And I'm going to say what is going to be my my all data table all data table is going to be nothing but whatever table is kept in the full table just pick up that particular table so I'm just going to refer to the full table column and let's just close this particular let statement as of now let's just take a look at what do we get so I'm just going to go with in and in just call that particular variable once again all data table let's just see I'm going to get table 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 once again if I peek into the table this table that I have received and this table that I initially had are the same tables, no difference. All that I have done is just, you know, uh, reference the table through a variable and I'm just calling that particular variable, nothing too complicated. Now that we have the table, let's just actually pick up that value column of this particular table and then reference the index minus one and get the previous row record of that. So I'm just gonna go over right here and let's just start to declare a second variable and my second variable is going to be let's say the previous row value. Now what do I want to do? If you think about it the previous row value is going to appear as a new column altogether. That means here in this particular table which are the three capture tables right here I'd like to create another column right here which is going to be previous value and this is actually going to show me the previous value of the previous record. That's how I'd like to do it. The function that I'm going to use is table.addColumns to drive that particular calculation. So I'm going to say that the previous row value is going to come once you do table.addColumns. Now once you do table.addColumns, the first part of this particular function is that, hey, to which table are you trying to add a new column? I'm trying to add a new column to this particular table right here and this particular table is nothing but a reference of this particular variable that I have created which is all data table. So I'm just going to say that in the all data table which I just declared a while ago I'd like to create a new column. Let's just create a dummy column first. Let's just see that can we actually create a column and is it, is it getting created or not and we'll proceed and tweak that particular formula. Now once you write that to which table you are trying to add a column then it says that if you move on it says what's the new column so I'm just going to say the name of the new column is going to be the previous value and then it says that hey can you tell me what is the formula that you'd like to use to generate a value so I'm just going to say that for as of now in each row of the new table of the new column that we are trying to create in each row of that column why don't you just write one as a pseudo value right that's what I'll do. So uh, we're good to go, just put a comma and just like get that particular step as an output. So after in, I'm just going to write previous value as an output. Now what I'm seeking to get, let's just kind of format this real quick. All right. Now what I'm seeking to get is one as a column added by the name of previous value to every single row of this particular table. Let's just try to see that. I click on OK. I just peek into the table and we now have a new column which just says 11111 because that's a pseudo value that we created. Now let's just try to tweak that one and try to fetch the values from the value column and try to say index minus one, right? Okay, let's just do that. So I'm just going to open up my formula bar once again and instead of writing one, let's just write something more meaningful. So I'm going to say that, hey, go again, go to the all data table. 
And in the all data table, I'm trying to reference the value column, which is right here. And in that particular value column, what I'd like to do is I'd like to reference the uh, row number, but which row number? The previous row number. So I'm just going to start the curly bracket. In that curly bracket, I'm just going to say that I'm just trying to refer the index column, but not the current index, because if you actually refer to the current zeroth row, you're going to get the very value itself, but I'm just going to refer to the previous value. So I'm just going to say, hey, minus one, close that curly bracket right here. And this should actually work. So let's just see what we get. I'm just gonna click on OK. And if I maybe go peek into this, we do get the previous values. This is working absolutely fine. But the only problem is that if you actually go and start to evaluate the value for the first row, zero minus one is going to give you minus one. And there is no minus one row reference in a table. That's why the first value errors out. Uh, one minus one gives you the zeroth row and the zeroth row is nothing but 125. And that's where you actually take a look at the value. All the other values are fine, but this value is actually wrong. So let's just try to fix the error. So I'm gonna go back to my function once again, and I'm gonna say that this function might just error out for the first row, not a problem. I can write a try statement and I can say, hey, why don't you try this particular formula that I have written in every single row of the table. And if this doesn't work, that's fine. Just write otherwise. And I'm going to say null, right? And I'm just going to kind of commit to the formula. Let's just see what we get. The first value is null, 125, 106, the previous row, 180, 121, all good. Let's just take a look at the second table, all good. Third table, all good. Now, all that we want to do in the end is open up this particular table. Now, general way of opening up the table is expand. But once I start to expand the table, sure enough, um, I can expand the three columns right here, category, value, and previous value. But I would then have to also delete the full table and the category columns right here. So let's just not do that. Let's just try it some other way, right? I'm going to go ahead and click on the FX step right here to create a new step. And I'm going to use the function called table.combine, right? Table.combine, start the bracket. It says that, hey, which tables do you want to combine? So I want to combine these tables. The columns are the same. In this table, the column is the same. The columns are the same. The columns are the same. So I'd like to combine these three tables. Now, these three tables that I'd like to combine, I need to supply it as a list. Take a look. It's asking that, hey, give me a tables, like multiple tables that you want to combine, but provide to me as a list right? So sure enough. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to convert this column into a list. So right click on this particular column, I'll say drill down, and this column actually forms a list. Now once this is a list, this can actually go become a feeder in the table.combine function, I write the table.combine, close the bracket, commit to the formula, press enter, and we have the entire data, you know, with us. Now, you can see that it's referring to the previous row, all good, all good, null value, all good, all good, all good. Now, again, you know, you don't really want to have the index column. You don't really want to have that. So again, you'll have to create an additional step to delete that column. Let's just not try to create that step. So I'm just going to come right here. I'm going to put a comma. And I'm going to say that from the tables that I'm trying to combine, which is the list that I had created from that list, I just want three columns, I just want the category column, the value column and the previous value column. And the columns that you're going to provide that you want to combine from the list is just going to be a list itself. So I'm going to form a list, which is a curly bracket. And I'm going to say that I want the category column. The next column that I want is the value column. Uh, and the next column that I want is the previous value column, right? This should work, press enter, and that column is not there. So we were just trying to save the steps that we had it, just trying to use the unutilized parts of the formula as much as we can, and we got to this particular answer. We have the category, value, and the previous value for the subcategory. All right, that was all about the little power query challenge. In case you have any questions around this, please feel free to drop in a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a big shout out to everybody who participated in this little power query challenge. Thank you so much for that. In case you haven't really taken a look at the creative solutions that people have posted, you should definitely take a look at the blog comments. And you're going to find some very interesting solutions that people have given, which are actually far better than what I have actually done right here. Thank you so much for watching this. And I will definitely catch you guys in the next one. Before I go, a quick shout out about my DAX and my power query courses. In case you're starting out with Power BI, and Power Query and DAX seem hard, and you'd like to master these concepts right from scratch, building up your fundamentals first, and then proceeding on to solving more challenging problems of your data, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my online courses. It's gonna be highly beneficial. Thanks so much, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers, bye.